Hey, I'm Devin from VR Scout, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to edit and share VR180 videos. VR180 is a relatively new format, but it's the easiest way to shoot immersive 3D content that can be viewed on a VR headset or a flat screen like a phone or computer. If you haven't seen part one of this tutorial series yet, I would recommend checking that out to get caught up to speed on the format and learn some tips on how to shoot VR180 content. The video is linked in the description down below. All right, you ready? Let's talk post-production. The post-production workflow for VR180 involves processing, editing, and exporting. We'll start off with processing, which includes stitching and converting your video files. Different VR180 cameras are going to have different file types and formats. So while some cameras might shoot MOV or MP4 files, cameras like the Insta360 Evo actually shoot a .insv video file, which is proprietary to Insta360. If you look at the file name for Zcam footage, you can see that the file name actually has important information that the stitching software needs to read. This information is useful to tell the stitching software which eye each file belongs to. The fisheye or mesh view is pretty much what your camera sees. It's the way that VR180 footage is captured in its raw form. When displayed in a one-to-one -one aspect ratio square, everything is going to look very wide. However, for VR180, we need to process this footage and turn it into a equirectangular projection. An equirectangular projection is what happens when you take a spherical globe and stretch it out into a map. With 360 video, we use a full equirectangular projection, which is taking that globe and stretching it out. With VR180 video, we're using a hemisphere, so we're actually only using half of that globe. With VR180, we need to process that fisheye mesh video into a cropped Equirect before we can begin editing. I imported the footage I'm going to be working with. I have files from an Insta360 Evo, a Views XR camera, and a Zcam K1 Pro. If I open up the Insta360 Evo file, I'll see that I have actually two files for my take. These are the left and right eye video files. The file format's in a .insv, which is a proprietary Insta360 panoramic video file. In order to stitch and convert this video file, I need to use Insta360 Studio for the Insta360 Evo camera. When you start up Insta360 Studio, it'll look something like this. On the left side, you'll see your footage area where you can drag and drop 360 or 180 degree video files. On the right side, you'll have some settings and options. In the middle, you'll have a browser where you can actually view the video files that you bring in. And on the bottom, there's a timeline where you can trim and select the clips that you want. I'm going to drag in both files for the one take that I would like to stitch. So once I brought this file in, I can see that it's given me a quick stitch of what the file will look like. It's already stretched your video file out into a equirectangular projection. We're no longer seeing the fisheye view that the camera captured. I can see both the left and right eye views of the file. On the bottom, there's a long timeline, so I can see how long my video file is, and I can actually trim this timeline to create an in and out point. Now, you will be doing a lot of the editing later on, so unless you know you're absolutely not going to need that video file, you can leave your in and out points longer in this stitching software. You can skim through the video and see a preview of what your footage will look like. On the right side, you can enable your stabilization for this camera. The Insta360 Evo does a great job with stabilization, so I generally like to keep this one on. The vertical lock direction makes sure that your horizon is generally kept level. Since you can't reorient your horizon later on in post-production, it's good to always have this selected. Once you have your in and out points, you can play through the video to make sure it looks good. And when you're ready, you can start stitching your files. You would go to File, and export and select your resolution. For this camera, I know that the maximum resolution is 5.7K. So the resolution that we want is 5760 by 2880. Your bit rate should be kept at original. If you wanted to increase it, you can, but I recommend not decreasing it. Here you can rename your file name and choose a path for where you want the file to be exported to. When you click OK, it'll start stitching your video file. Processing times vary, but you want to make sure that you do leave enough time to stitch your video files before you can edit. And just like that, your video file should be ready. 
As you can see, it's now in a cropped equirectangular stereoscopic projection. Both video files are combined into a single file. You have your left and right eye, and everything looks good. Your Zcam video files will appear as two separate MOV files. If you look closely, you can actually see the other lens from the video file you're looking at. We need to combine these two files into a single file before we can begin editing. To stitch Zcam footage, you'll have to use Wonderstitch, which is a tool built into the Zcam controller app. In Zcam controller, start up Wonderstitch and select the folder that your files are in. For Zcam, it's important not to change the file names so that Wonderstitch can read the file types correctly. You can select your in and out frames with the slider. Your model name and camera ID should appear automatically from the file. However, if they do not, you can manually plug this in. Your camera ID should be on the bottom of your camera. Choose your output destination, your output resolution, which is 2880 by 5760. And here you would want that equirectangular projection. VR 180 mesh would be the current fisheye view that we're seeing in the display, but we want it as a cropped equirect. I like working with a side-by-side left-right layout, so I'll keep it at that. Your codec type should be H.264. I go with a constant bitrate at 200M. The computer I'm using has a GPU, so I can use a GPU for stitching. Smart align, make sure that the horizon is correct. And switching left and right will only matter if your cameras are incorrectly labeled. Once everything looks good, you can click Start to begin stitching. Once you have your stitched and converted VR180 video files in a cropped equirectangular format, we can begin editing. Adobe Premiere Pro has a great workflow for 180, so for this tutorial I'll be using that. Start up Premiere and create a new project. Those of you who use Premiere for editing will be familiar with the layout, but your project window is where your media will be. So let's import our files here. We'll need to create a sequence. So I will actually double click to preview. This is footage from the Evo camera and drag that right over into my timeline, which will create a new sequence. Now, I'm not happy with this take, so I'm actually going to delete that. But you can see here in our project window that a new sequence was created. Setting up your sequence correctly for VR180 is one of the most important steps with post-production. Right-click and go to Sequence Settings to make sure that everything's correct. Your frame size should be 5760 by 2880 or the maximum resolution of the cameras that you're working with. For video previews, you can have your own settings. I prefer using QuickTime and ProRes 422. The most important setting in Premiere is here under VR Properties. You need to make sure that your videos display correctly. So you want your projection to be equirectangular. You want your layout to be stereoscopic. I have mine side by side, however you can also edit in over under. For VR 180, both your horizontal capture view and your vertical capture view need to be 180 degrees. If this looks correct, click OK. Now you can double click on a take, skim through the video file, select an in and out point, and drag it onto your timeline. Now we should have three separate videos in our timeline. You can click through and preview them in stereoscopic side by side. However, we'd really like to see this in VR and see what it would look like if we were watching it on a flat screen or in a headset. In order to do that, we need to toggle the VR video display. Right click on your video preview, go to VR video and enable to jump into a view that is going to show you what it would look like. I actually prefer to turn off the controls. So right click, go to VR video and uncheck show controls. This square view will give you an idea of what your video will look like. However, this isn't the way YouTube displays it. In order to get a better layout, you can right click and go to settings under VR video and change the horizontal and vertical FOV. By decreasing the vertical field of view to about 60, you can get a 16 by nine image and get a preview of what your video will look like on YouTube. Notice that you can't scroll past the 180 degree mark on the sides and top and bottom. 
To preview your video in 3D, you can select between your left eye, right eye, and a combined anaglyph view to see your video in 3D. In order to view this in 3D, you're going to need anaglyph glasses. These are the red and cyan 3D glasses that you might have seen around. They're pretty easy to find, so I would recommend picking up a pair. You can always toggle on and off the VR video display through this little icon. To add that to your toolbar, click the plus and drag the toggle VR video display icon onto your toolbar. This way you can jump in and out of a VR video display. If you prefer to edit by just looking at the left or right eye, you can also revert to doing that. You can edit your video the same way you would a 2D video. The only difference is how it's displayed. As I mentioned, you can toggle on and off between your VR view and your regular view of side-by-side, -side, left, right, stereoscopic. I prefer to edit side-by-side -side because it makes sense that my left eye is on the left and my right eye is on the right. However, you can also choose to edit top-bottom if you prefer to do that. If you plan on editing top-bottom, just make sure that your sequence settings are set accordingly. Once you bring in your video files and cut them down to the length you want them to be, you can start adding transitions and graphics to spice up your video a bit. I prefer to keep it simple and generally use dip to blacks as a transition. Other effects and transitions don't really translate well for VR180 and can actually disorient your viewers. To add an effect, click on the effects panel and find the effects you want. I'm going to add in a dip to black transition first. This will allow me to gently transition between my two shots. If you wanted to, you can add some effects that are very specific to VR video. Under the Immersive Video folder, you can find a few of these. The VR Mobius Zoom is a fun one to use. Just make sure that your effect controls are set accordingly. To preview what this would look like in headset, you can jump to the VR preview mode. In order to add text to your VR180 video, you need to make sure it's displayed correctly. Use the text tool and click on the center of your two videos. Here you can type in the text that you want, and under effect controls, make sure that it's centered. Now while this text looks okay here on this side-by-side -side stereoscopic video, we need to make sure it's displayed correctly when we jump into a headset. In order to create stereoscopic text or overlays, you'll need to use a special effect. Under Video Effects and Immersive Video, you'll find the VR Plane to Sphere effect. Drag this onto your video. You'll see that it splits the text into two so that it's displayed both on the left and right eye. By clicking on the text layer and going to Effect Controls, you can scroll down to the VR Plane to Sphere effect. When you add this effect, it automatically shrinks it down to 60%, so let's go back up to 100. The stereo disparity shows the separation between the left and right eye, and how far the text will appear in relation to the viewer. And to move stereoscopic text, you're going to have to use the rotate source or rotate projection functions. Here, you can change the tilt, pan, and roll functions in order to have the text display as you want. You can also rotate the source of the image if you'd like to play in 3D space. You can add keyframes to each of these elements to make text move, come closer, go farther away, and animate how you'd like to in your video. To see how your text is displayed, you can jump into your VR video display. In order to preview this in 3D, you'll have to change to anaglyph mode. Notice how the text does not look 3D? That's because there's no stereo disparity on it. By changing the stereo disparity slider, you can add a 3D element to that text. The best way to understand how the text is going to be displayed and what the proper distance is, is to look at this with anaglyph glasses. In the timeline, you can actually preview your footage and see it pop out at you. This is great for understanding how far and close objects are and where your text and overlays should be placed. 
Premiere allows you to also use a headset like an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive or any of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets in order to watch your timeline and get video playback in real time in Premiere. When watching VR 180 on YouTube on a flat screen, you're only going to get the preview from the left eye. But in order to make sure that things are displayed correctly in a headset, be sure to use either Adobe Immersive Environment or Anaglyph Mode to see it in 3D. You can also add graphical overlays, PNG images, alpha channel video, the same way you would do text. Just make sure that you use the VR Plane to Sphere effect to make sure it's displayed correctly in stereoscopic 3D. As a test, I'm going to bring in the VR Scout logo, which is a PNG file, and add it to this shot. As you can see, it's centered up when I first bring it in. Under Video Effects and Immersive Video, I'll go ahead and add the VR Plane to Sphere effect to my PNG image. You can see it's stretched out. Under Effect Controls, I can change the VR Plane to Sphere effect to show how it's displayed. I can make it smaller. And by changing the projection, I can change how and where it's going to be displayed. That seems about right. I'm going to go ahead and add a stereo disparity of about two, which will give it just enough pop and make it seem like it's right up close next to me. Okay, now that you've finished editing your video, you need to make sure you export it with the correct settings. Once you have your final sequence, right click and export media. You can keep your format as an H.264 video. I prefer to use a high bit rate. You can change the name and output location. And it's always good to double check your video settings. So the width of your video should be 5760 by the height, which is 2880. Your bit rate settings are very important. You can keep your encoding at VBR one pass. With VR 180 video, you want to make sure that you're exporting at a high bit rate. So for this, I'm going to keep my target at 150, and my maximum doesn't need to be higher than 200. The most important setting is here on the bottom. You need to click that this video is VR, and make sure that the settings are correct. Your frame layout needs to be stereoscopic side by side, or over under if that's how you edited. Your horizontal and vertical fields of view need to be 180 degrees. If you don't have this displayed correctly, your file will have the wrong metadata and won't show up correctly on YouTube. Metadata is information within the file that explains what it is, how it's displayed, and other information about the content. By clicking that this video is VR and setting your horizontal and vertical field of view at 180 degrees, you are now injecting this file with metadata that says it is VR180. Once you're ready, click export. If you do all of these steps correctly, your video will export as a final VR180 video that you can upload straight to YouTube. When you're ready with your final video, you can drag it and upload it straight to YouTube. YouTube will be able to read the metadata in the file and recognize it as a VR180 video. While there are a number of VR180 cameras out there, a lot of them actually allow you to shoot, trim, and upload straight from your phone. I'll demonstrate the process of sharing content from your phone using the Insta360 Evo camera. Now once you've connected to your camera through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you can access the camera's app. It's important to know your camera and app really well so you don't miss crucial steps along the way. You can access your camera's footage under the camera files and select the clip you would like to use. Here you can actually trim by selecting an in and out point for your video. Once you've selected your beginning and end for your video, you can download it straight to your phone. Once you've downloaded the video from your camera to your phone, it should appear under the local folder. Now you can preview your video and play it through seamlessly. If you want to preview your footage in 3D, you can use a cardboard viewer headset it's a good idea to check the stereo depth and 3D effect by watching it in a headset. You can also crop your video into different display modes like square or 16x9 if you plan on exporting a 2D video. But in order to have your VR180 video, you want it to be displayed correctly, and then you would click on share and go to YouTube. 
It's important to know that when exporting and uploading footage straight from your phone, you will be limited to 4K resolution. Now, while this camera can shoot 5.7K, if I wanted to upload a 5.7K video, I would have to process it on a computer. And just like that, you can share your videos to YouTube. The VR180 Creator Tool is great to process and work with some of your VR180 footage. You can convert your files for editing, you can stitch Zcam K1 files, or you can inject metadata and prepare for publishing. Converting your files for editing means that you can switch from a left-right to a top-bottom view. It also means converting your files from a fisheye mesh into a cropped equirectangular for VR180 editing. You can also use the VR180 Creator Tool to stitch video files from the Zcam K1 Pro. If you choose not to use Wonderstitch, you can use this program to do that. And lastly, you can prepare your files for publishing. If you used another editor like Final Cut Pro for editing, you'll need to inject VR180 metadata into your file. You can use the Prepare for Publishing feature on the VR180 Creator Tool to do this. The VR180 Creator Tool is also great for VR180 photos, allowing you to either split photos, merge photos, or convert them into different formats. VR180 photos are great to share, and you can use Google Photos to do that. Just upload your VR180 photos and share a link with friends. It's been great to see all of the VR180 content that's made and shared by creators all around the world. We hope that this tutorial has been helpful to get you started on making some of your own content. We're eager to see what you create. If you like this video and want to see more tutorials, let us know in the comments with ideas for what you'd like to see. For more news and updates in immersive tech, follow us here on VR Scout, and I'll see you around.